Notice to the public, if you wish to address the council, please complete the public wishing to address the council form located on either end of the counter and give it to either the chairman or the council clerk prior to the beginning of the meeting. All comments must be addressed to the council as a whole. Addressing individual council members or staff is not allowed. Speakers should be courteous in their choice of words and actions and comments shall be limited to the issue and cannot involve individuals or staff related matters. All cell phones and electronic devices used for communication should be silenced for the duration of the meeting. I'd like to call the meeting of the Terrebonne Parish Budget and Finance Committee to order. We'll have the invocation by Mr. Carl Harding and the Pledge of Allegiance. Heavenly Father, as I ask that your Holy Spirit endowed this meeting, O oh God, with that same power that your darling son Jesus got up to have in his hand, O oh God. We ask you, O oh God, that you give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, O oh, oh God, that would take care of the affairs of Turbone Parish. Uh, we're asking you to bless Turbone Parish, and this is a good day, O oh God, to be an American. As we go forward today, O oh God, we ask that we have a blessing that's from on high. In your darling son Jesus' name, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Miss Charlie, can we get a roll call, please? Mr. Hamner, Mr. Babin, Miss Chauvin, Mr. Trustclair, Mr. Pledger, Mr. Harding, Mr. Voisin, Mr. Amity, Mr. Champagne. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum present. Thanks, Miss Charlie. Uh, from Clyde Hamner. On his absence tonight at our committee meetings reads as follows please be advised that i will not be in attendance at tonight's committee meetings i have reviewed the agenda and have made and have made known my concerns i apologize for any inconvenience my absence may cause thank you clyde hamner item number one Presentation of the 2023 Audited Annual Comprehensive Financial Report from, from Bourgeois Bennett. Mr. Paul, Ms. Amy. Can you, once we turn your mic on. There you go, it's on. Thanks. Uh, I want to thank the council for, uh, for having me here today. Again, my name is Paul Pachron with Bourgeois Bennett. Uh, the manager and my assistant on the job with Amy Zerang. Um, I want to uh, show like today, we have a, um, a PowerPoint presentation. This PowerPoint presentation is just going to really hit some of the, some of the high notes. Um, we met a couple weeks ago uh, with, with Ms. Candace uh, Malden and Parish President Bergeron, went through the financial statements. And today we met with a few of the council chairs and went through kind of really in depth on some of the, uh, the uh, financial statements and some of the uh, different areas of the audit report. Today, I want to uh, just really, again, focus on some of the high level type uh, areas and kind of open it up for any questions that uh, you may have. Uh, the next slide. So our audit was, um, we started in March of the year and it goes through June. The audit needs to be submitted to the legislative auditor by June 30th each year, and that's, it, it, it has been uh, done. Uh, uh, and also, it is submitted to the federal clearinghouse because we do have our, our federal grant money. It is also submitted um, uh, prior to June 30th. The engagement areas that we test. So we, we look at the financial statements. Uh, you'll, you've, uh, you've read the financial reports in prior years. You see how in-depth the financial statements are, several, several different funds. So we audit those financial statements. We also do what's called a single audit. Since we have several million dollars of grant funding, we are required to do a single audit of the, uh, of the grants. We need to test compliance of uh, several, several grants that, that we test. And then we do the agreed upon procedures. Those are required by the legislative audit. There's 14 areas. I'm gonna show those to you uh, in some bullet points a little bit further in. But those, again, those are required by the legislative auditor. Uh, the audit opinion, so we have what's called an unmodified opinion or a clean opinion on our financial statements that they're fairly stated. Uh, this has been inconsistent with all years prior. Uh, one item to note, uh, component units. 
So not only is the parish included in this audit report, but our, our uh, component units, uh, some of the uh, wreck and fire districts, those are also included in those. those. So all those audit reports from all the various parish entities get put into this final report and we have a comprehensive uh, report. Those state, ag state agreed upon procedures that I alluded to earlier, these are the 14 areas that we test. Uh, you, you'll see them. Uh, everybody knows those ethics uh, training that we do and the sexual harassment training that everyone, so those are some of the areas that we test. Uh, credit cards, we talked about this earlier today with some of uh, the council chairs. Credit cards and travel, that's a big area that the legislative auditor wants us as auditors to look at because that's where areas of abuse have been you see it on, on television and you'll see it on um, in the news. That's an area that they really want us as audits to focus on to make sure that we are above board. And I'm happy to say that no no findings, all of our testing uh, uh, in, in compliance and, and no uh, no findings on the state, state agreed upon procedures. Uh, next area is a single audit. So uh, we had roughly 88 million in federal funds last year, about 53.4 million this year. So we test various uh, grants, make, make sure that we are in compliance with those grants. Uh, we, we have the FEMA funding and some of the uh, COVID related funds and various other grant funds that we test. We test for each grant has compliance areas that are required. So we test for those compliance areas. Uh, also no, no, uh, findings, no compliance findings, and uh, no findings related to um, internal controls. Uh, some of the highlights for the assets and liabilities of the parish. So our total assets increased from roughly um, 262 million to 313 million. So main reason for some of those increases is the funding that we've been receiving. Uh, some of the uh, IDA funding has uh, increased some of our cash and receivable balances. Uh, liabilities are up a little bit, but that most of that is some of the due to uh, other funds that we have. Uh, I know everybody looks at our fund balance, so our total fund balance did increase 121 million to 130, 133 million. And our general funds fund balance increased from 17 million to 43 million. Again, with a lot of this uh, funding that we have received from Hurricane Ida, the FEMA funding and the insurance proceeds uh, that has increased our fund balance. Uh, the next slide is our revenues and expenses. So total revenues increased from 161 million to 178 million. FEMA funding is one of the main uh, main areas for this increase. And you'll see in the middle, the middle uh, bullet, our insurance proceeds. We, re we received over 46 million of insurance proceeds. So in prior years, we, we incurred some of the expenses and the repairs in prior years, and now we are receiving the funding, the FEMA funding and insurance proceeds uh, that was required to, uh, for these repairs. Total expenditures, 190 million this year, 210 million. Again, this is continued um, repairs and maintenance for, related, to, related to the hurricane. And we also had some marsh fire expenses this year. The utility fund, our operating revenues did decrease this year. Um, we are 52 million prior year, 36 million this year. And then same thing on our operating expenses, we had some decreases there. The main reason for these decreases is because we're doing some uh, catch up. So we had um, some stoppage in prior years uh, with, uh, with, the, with the hurricane. And so because of that stoppage, we had to uh, uh, get it back rolling in the, in the current year as far as revenues um, and, and expenditures. Uh, the parish is working on funding uh, some FEMA funding to, and securing that funding to assist with the hurricane repairs that are needed for the uh, for the utility fund. Uh, capital uh, project highlights, you'll see some of the major projects that we completed this year. The Bayou Country Sports Park, roughly 6.7 million. Uh, the Lashbrook Pump Station, Elliott Jones Pump Station, uh, and then some of the other various projects. And then we have some projects that are in progress right now. Uh, Centennial Plaza, Eastside Police, uh, substation, and then some other uh, some of the, some of the other projects that you see. Uh, debt service. So I wanted to uh, give everybody a kind of a flavor of where we are on the debt side. So um, as of um, end of the year, we had roughly 181 million of total of total debt, 
And then during the year, we paid down roughly $9.2 million in debt for the year. And then as, as everyone recalls, we did receive $50 million uh, in uh, we, we, did, we did issue roughly 50 million in bonds related to the uh, to the hurricane. We made our first principal payment this year, 5.6 million uh, on that bond, and that and that will go through 2033. With that, I'm going to uh, kind of open up to any questions you may have. Um, wanna, and again, I want to thank everyone for having us as your auditors. And if 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 we get into any uh, questions that may arise after, please feel free to reach out to us with any, with any phone calls or emails. We, we, we ha happily do the research for you to get any answers. Council members, any questions, concerns? Well, I can say um, with no, um, no questions or anything like that, we do, uh, we do appreciate all that, uh, that you guys do for us. Thank you. Appreciate it. Item number two, update status on the CDBG discovery Reco recovery application and priority list. Um, Mr. Carl Harding, I'll, I'll um, turn the mic over to you. Yeah, um, going out and about throughout the parish and we've actually gotten to a point where we've actually looked at uh, phase one, phase two, and uh, the alternatives that we actually have for the projection um, of uh, assortment of perhaps uh, uh, near $117 million. Actually, in the, uh, as we spoke a little bit about that in our previous meeting, uh, this projection of the money will be coming in uh, at, in 2025, hopefully. So we look at the highest and the lowest uh, income areas in Turbo and Parish, <clears throat> and we can go to the next slide. And originally, when we uh, this first really actually came up, and I want to apologize not not only just to my constituents, but then uh, sometimes uh, being here, you know, man, you don't all 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 the way grasp what's going on. And uh, not to say I'm just going with the flow, but it takes a little time uh, for everything to set in. And the first question that was asked, and when it was really I really got a little grasp to this, is uh, the, the definition of underserved and low to moderate income. And uh, I think uh, I think it'd be a fair uh, assessment that the definition came about that all the turbo parish was actually um, um, uh, underserved. And this is a map, and you can easily obtain this off um, um, off the internet. Red is going to be the the most needed, uh, the underserved and the low to moderate in income areas in turbo parish. And, and going from red to uh, to the orange, to the light greens, and to the little darker greens, to the extreme, uh, the real Kelly green uh, colors. And if you look at this particular map, the concentration and this, and all of this is is to look at what we're going to do, how we make those adjustments. Because I think a lot of people that setting up here that are out there that uh, we meet, they're concerned about the red areas, and we're looking at the coastline. And as we look at the coastline and we're coming more into the city, there are pockets of uh, shades of uh, red, orange, and you know what I mean, a little brown here and there. And then there are other areas. Next slide, please. So to, to kind of look at basically um, my area of concern, which is District 2, but then uh, again, I am... Um, want to look at all of Turbone Parish. Uh, this here, if you see that Morgan City area right there, um, I have a concern about how, how we actually look at our perhaps last frontier uh, to make an investment of economic uh, growth, to our infrastructure, and try to uh, take care of uh, the people in the Gibson Donner, uh, down the Chacahula area, uh, because they're actually, they're suffering from uh, sewage problems and uh, economic growth that's there. So we want to really kind of focus on all of it. Uh, we, it, and it. And it is the presumption that people sometimes get because oftentimes we talk about uh, the qualities of the life program. And as I had a conversation earlier today, uh, what they hear is a lot of downtown work, but then there are other areas that we are involved with. 
but we want to make sure uh, that we actually uh, get the true definition of low to moderate income and uh, those underserved areas. Next slide, please. This is another uh, slide where we look at basically west side of a town, and we're looking at here where you see home we're at, and you see the growth and where you see the wealth at, and not only just uh, uh, yearly incomes, we're looking at the values of property uh, and things that, uh, of that nature. But you kind of look in that little area, and if you uh, really know about Homer, Louisiana, and Turbo and Parish, the Homer section right there, and we're going down those bias. And we don't want to forget about those bias because that's a very vital area that we're spending a lot of money with CPRA, the levy district, a lot of money that's going down there. We want to refurbish our coastline. We want our uh, wildlife and our fishery to actually improve. So we're trying to make the improvement and get the more bang for our buck. But still in all, those people that are up in the northwestern corner of our, our parish seem to be those people that need to be a little greener than what they are. Next slide, please. Thank you so much, Ms. Tammy. Uh, so to make it more personal, this is my, my particular district. And if you notice <laughs> what color it is, it is definitely red. So you know, you know, my concern here is the fact that we must focus on that. Oftentimes, we uh, get confused in different types of money and how we're going to spend this money, uh, where the money is going, where it should be going, where it's not going. We want to focus on these areas. Okay, so we focus in on that. Next slide, please. <clears throat> now, this, you know, man, I cannot incorporate my district uh, with anybody else's district, but then, you know, man, the truth is the light and the truth uh, and, the, uh, and the shells set you free. It's unfortunate uh, the fact that generally when we have redistricting, uh, District 1 and District 2, Two, they juggle back and forth from streets. We, we're not changing uh, the dynamics, uh, we, uh, really, uh, dynamics, whether it's two streets over, four streets over, it doesn't matter. It is the fact that the area that it is actually being of concern. If you notice that the, here in the middle here, this is where uh, District 1 and District 2, it actually changes over from District 1 to District 2. You go through the tunnel, and, it, and, and I had a conversation earlier. If you go from... Uh, from Hollywood Road, straight down, take a right on the medium, which is uh, by Terrier, go through the tunnel, you know what I mean? Basically, that's, next slide please. Basically, that, that's basically the same type of people. Now, the, the focus point that we're actually looking at is um, $117 million. That's assumed, okay? So you assume that if 40% of the money that's gonna come to Turbine Parish is uh, because of the low to moderate income and the underserved, that would equate to $46.8 million to that particular area. So on the most personal standpoint, next slide, please. On the more personal standpoint, if you look at most people that I see, uh, that's within my community. And my community actually would actually represent, if you're looking at 20% of that uh, $117 million, it would equate to $23 million. And looking at it that way, and, and the perception of how America is established, one man, one vote, everybody actually have an opportunity for uh, fair and equal services. Uh, so this is, uh, next slide, please. It's not about color. It's really not about race. It's about simple math. If we're looking at, if everyone in Turbon Parish, which basically has 109,000 people in it, and everybody in Turbon Parish got $109,000, uh, I think I made mention of this that um, you think everybody's going to get $1,000. I don't think so. Uh, so we, we, we want to maintain it's not about color, it's really not about race. It's about the numbers. It's about the math. Next slide. Poverty. If you look at these, and give you a little opportunity to look at it. But me, uh, I was above poverty at one time. But if you do uh, do the math, since I've been uh, a council person after uh, COVID and after uh, Hurricane Ida, I actually sacrificed my yearly in income by X amount of dollars was guess what? Put me at the poverty level. Therefore, you know what I mean, someone that's been above the poverty level, and now that I become a public servant, 
I am at the poverty level, so I feel the pain of those people that I'm serving. So, you know, man, if you want to look at the numbers or you just want to take my personal account of this, that it's a struggle for people to actually make it in an area in low to moderate income uh, on a daily, daily uh, basis. And you're looking at those areas that would have those other things that is associated with Turbon Parish, such as homelessness, uh, drug addictions, lack of housing, housing, affordable housing. So, you know, to get a uh, better look at, next slide, please, to get a better look at, uh, basically, it's, it's looking at the property uh, rates here. And, and that's a very diverse culture here. And if you look at this particular graph, again, it's not about race, it's not about color, it's about the numbers. Okay, next slide, please. All right, this is the word that uh, a lot of people just pass up in the dictionary, but actually is, is a reason why it's in the dictionary. And that word is gentrification, okay? So when my, my neighbors and my friends uh, and my relatives down on the coastline, from Montague to Chauvin to Dulac uh, to Dulars, those people that, that need uh, sewage uh, and other things that are out there uh, in Gibson, uh, I, I appreciate the Great Improvement Committee for being out here because they have they have a problem with uh, uh, community center. They have a problem with uh, sewage. They have a problem with drainage. They have a problem uh, with a number of things that they feel disenfranchised. So when we say that uh, phase one, phase two, and the alternatives, and we're going to resubmit our application, I would like for us to resubmit our ideology because previously the priority list uh, doesn't seem to be favorable to, to the low to moderate income and the underserved. So in going forward and asking for the progress and what position that we are in uh, toward our uh, objective of completing our application by November, I would like to actually have more input from those people that's in gray, those people that's down there uh, on at Coast Guard Road. Uh, after the hurricane, I went down the Coast Guard Road and realized that, you know, man, they have a community center that's down there too. They have, they still have people that live down there. So, you know, man, we just not just looking for Carl Harding's district. Yes, I'm most definitely concerned about my district, but then I'm concerned about Turbo and Parish as a whole because I've been to Montague. I like that levee you have over there. We can go fishing that's down there, and the community that we actually have that's down there, we go from Montague all the way to Dulage, uh with the fishing and the trapping. I walk the swamp. So, you know what I mean? I want to refurbish our, our, our coastline. I want our, our wildlife to be in there, but I still want uh, our people within our community in each and every community from each and every district that's up here to actually be satisfied and feel as if that they are, they are actually uh, be concerned about. So we want to avoid gentrification. I think by now you guys should have actually read the reason, uh, uh, the meaning of gentrification. Uh, therefore, I ask uh, the administration as we go forward and we submit our application, be more considerate as we go forward and we would like to know where are we going, have more input into it. Uh, I know this administration uh, inherited this. This actually was basically in place prior to all of this. So it's not about... Um, everything going downtown. That's not the approach. I don't think they have the approach of everything going downtown. But I think our infrastructure and what's more important to the livelihood of the people should be considered about $117 million. And when we have that application, prior to the application being sent off, uh, I would like to have some input into that. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harding. Mr. Badger. All right. So just for some uh, clarification, um, you know, this program did start off with what they call allocation one and allocation two. Uh, we were in the process of answering questions on allocation one uh, when the state came in and said, and of course, states OCD came in and said that we're going to combine everything into one. And, and even in situations where we might have had a uh, activate the Bayou one and an activate the Bayou two. Uh, we had conversations after they said that saying, do we want to combine these or do we want to leave these the way they are? Uh, and some situations we combine and some situations we kept them where they were. The allocation one and two 
with the first one being January 8th and the second one with a February time frame, but I think ended up being March 19th, if I'm not mistaken, um, we had to turn in plans that they agreed of the direction that we were going to go spend the money. And once they agreed on the direction we were going to spend the money, the process after that is to submit the application with more detail of the direction they approved for us to spend the money, right? So uh, when we talk about a wastewater study or a stormwater study, uh, small business grants, uh, they agreed with our initial, uh, probably it was three or four paragraph uh, plan. And now we got to get, you know, nuts and bolts about uh, how can we make some of that happen. A good example is on the support the seafood initiative is where we can do some grants for fishermen and from there also do a study like kind of immediate need, long-term need, right? And so we're able to do that across many of the allocations that we've talked about. Um, and, you know, I have heard the conversation on multiple occasions about making sure uh, the communities that are less fortunate getting their share. So once we turn in the application with a better detail of the type of services that we're going to offer, right, for example, like small business grants, once we get the approval and get the funding, and I'm sure as we go through that process, we start to have conversations about what does it mean for our residents to have access to that funding? And then this process also being an application and, and trying to make sure that we provide opportunities for residents across our parish, right? Like, as you showed, a majority of our parish uh, are dealing with these issues. And one of the main issues we found that is trouble to the east side is uh, water, right? Having a good, good water access line. Uh, so, in that, and that's one of the projects that we're looking at, uh, actually in partnering with Waterworks to help get funding to give better access to drinkable water, you know, usable water. Uh, on the east side. So for a project that's going to probably be a little bit of the west side, probably more in a coastal and a little bit on the east side is going to benefit everybody south of the intercoastal. So uh, to be to be on the same page is very important to me that we all understand this process and where we're going through this process and hopefully they don't change it again. Uh, we have to November, what's the November what? 30th. 30th to submit all our applications, but we're getting ready to start submitting some applications now for us to get the approval of the money that then gives us the opportunity for us to accept applications to award the money. And so, um, you know, if we need to get together and, and, and make sure that those that have concerns, because I hear, I hear a concern of making sure everybody's going to have an equal opportunity to the funding. Uh, I'm definitely, you know, whatever we could do to have that conversation and be as transparent as possible as we can, uh, whether or not we're going to do, you know, project one or project two, we are past that. We had to do some backup plans, and some of our plans that were done in Allocation 2 were backup plans in Allocation 1, but we haven't added or changed or have the ability to change what those plans are going to be. You know, like if we look at something and we designated a location in the plan, if we try to change that location, we can lose the funding for that project. And so we just got to make sure that as we move forward that we're all on the same page. Uh, and that, again, if there's anybody that has concerns, you know, but we're not at that point, but I do want to make sure that our residents feel like they have opportunities to use this funding because, to me, this is this is out of recovery, right? This is uh, parish recovery. This is the opportunity for us to uh, get some funding from the state and really make a significant impact for the residents in our parish. And so I just want to make sure that uh, that's understood. So anything I could do to help make that happen, please let me know. Please, please let us know. Yeah, and... Uh First thing I I, I would uh, like for to happen. No offense to any 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 other color of that map there right there. I would love to meet uh, with you and, and and other people that's in that red and that pink area, uh, and get uh, somehow or another get those folk in that area to really hear what they have to say. Uh, because you know, I mean, most uh, I, I I'm very honest about this. You know, I mean, since I become a councilman and actually gave away that salary that I had to be a full time councilman. I'm at the poverty level, you know what I mean? So if you really want to look at it, you know what I mean? I'm not just talking for everybody else. I'm talking for me too. I'm in that position. I live in that red area. I see that red area. Therefore, I have the concerns of that red area. And no offense to nobody that's already making the greens or have it already. You know what I mean? If you do the statistic, you know what I mean? Uh, you see how many houses in certain districts uh, that, that's worth $500,000. 
you know what I mean, compared to uh, those areas that people that uh, came off the farms to come into the inner city, the people that already was living inside a home, where they actually took the suburban flight, now they have the rural flight, and that economic uh, a path that they have actually had on the rural areas actually creates a strain on those folks that are on the inner city because that's when that word gentrification comes in because now we don't have any housing for them and now we don't have no infrastructure for them. So, you know what I mean, what's going to happen there? The property value is going to go up, so their opportunities are lessened. So we need uh, 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 schools that actually create uh, uh, an opportunity for those people to go back and get those trades that that build houses, that, that are electricians, that are carpenters, those people that actually, uh, you take an area that whereas wherever you go, you have to walk, not to a convenience store, you have to catch a ride to a supermarket outside these areas. So, you know, um, not, like I said, it's not just my area, you know, man, you know, I've, I've been all over Turbo Parish. I have a compassion for Turbo Parish. Like I said, I walked the marsh, uh, Try to go out there trying to get some fish out the body. So that's what we want to do. We want to actually make sure that um, we we have a, a a shoe for everyone that fits them. And 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 and, and if you whether you wear a shoe that that's too small for you, it's gonna hurt. Uh, a shoe that's too big for you, it should create problems for you. So we want the shoe that fits. That's all we want to do. That so um, from my point of view. As I conclude, because you know I can talk like a Baptist preacher. <clears throat> what I what I what I want to do is meet with you, with those, some of those pinks and those reds, and, and I think those people would actually give you a, a, a pretty good idea of the heartbeat of Terrell Parish. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harding, uh, Mr. Champagne. Yeah, I just have a quick question. Is it would it be possible to take our the current list of projects that we have uh, potentially out there and look at the impact for each one of those colored districts? You know, uh, the low to uh, income districts, and see, you know, and so that you could share with with us what those impacts will be in each area. I'm sorry, Ms. Candace. Um, so the state is doing that as we submit um, the applications because we want to make sure we're following their definitions and their maps and their guidelines for as to what is going to be impacted. Um, through our recovery plan proposals, which are in the um, on the website, they do have some of the area that will benefit from it. But once we get the okay from the state and the approval, we'll have a better idea of what that impact is other than what we are projecting for it to be right now. So right now we don't have it at the granular level that he had shown uh, with the red and the, no, sir. the gold. And no, the, sir. Okay. So CSRS is working. There are consultants for that. They are working on those applications and they'll have that in a little bit more depth. And then once the state gives us the okay, it'll be the final say of this is what's being impacted. Thank we you. have an idea of where it's going to be. Just not a finalized one. You're good, Mr. Champagne? Yep. Thanks, uh, Ms. Candace. Uh, Jace, Mr. Bezerra? Yeah, I just want to add, you know, comparably, and I might have said this, I can't remember, I just want to cover it anyway. Uh, we had conversations with Lake Charles, and we kind of went to them and said, you know, what is your experience and what is going on and everything else to, fr to find out. We're in the exact same spot as Lake Charles is, even though they were a year before us. And I couldn't imagine dealing with this a year, the, year further out. Uh, so to say, you know, what's been done, what works, uh, you know, not a new, pr new program I can understand. Probably they're making some adjustments as they go. But it's like us and Lake Charles both kind of leading the charge on this is how this recovery funds have been done this way for the first time. No different than when you look at the housing side of it and how everything got pushed to Louisiana Housing Corporation instead of money going direct, you know, that part's even different where we can't apply any of these funds to housing, you know, and, and operations and those kind of things. We have to lay out these specific projects. So I just want to make sure everybody understood that, that this is this uncharted water with us working with the state. And, and hopefully we set the standard for how things can be successful in the future. And hopefully that translates to money maybe coming a little faster in these kind of events. And 
that's something I've, I've wanted to look at since we started. You know, when you look at somebody with like FEMA, where you've had storms that have a certain category with a certain average amount of damage, that some of that money would flow faster than it has in the past. And and then you kind of work out the other, you know, 25%. That's still conversations I have on a regular basis. And this is good examples that we're almost, you know, right here on the third year anniversary of uh, Ida and how much stuff we still have to have repaired, including the building that we sit in right here that's hopefully will be finished in September, you know, so it's just crazy that we have to take that amount of time. I know people are still dealing with insurance and trying to get their homes repaired. And, you know, it's just, it, you know, in America in 2024, it's just crazy that we have to fight those battles. But we are here fighting those battles and we to do everything we can for our residents. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bajeron. Mr. Danny Babin. Yeah, just, uh, Jason, just to use your analogy about the water and to go back and relate it to a map, because that water project is taking place right here, it may pass through some red, some green, some yellow, and some orange areas that, that are affected. It doesn't necessarily mean that it was built in the red area. It was built conducive to the water supply. So I'm sure some of the other projects that, that are in here, and, and as Kevin said, we're not down to the, the granular end of it yet, but, but they may start in one particular area, but focus out to all the different areas. And I think the water analogy is probably w one of the best to use. So thank you. Thanks, Mr. Babin. Mr. Pulaski? Yeah, just to piggyback on what Candace was speaking about, on the website, which is tpcg.org slash recovery, where we have the, the applications that were submitted to the state earlier this year, um, each of those projects does have a section called beneficiaries, public benefit, target area, and boundaries. And it does get in a little bit into what the project and who it serves from the national objective, low to moderate income, disadvantaged communities. Um, it has percentages. It has a general area. It also describes the block, uh, block group and census tracts. So you can see specifically where each project has benefits. But like Mr. Babin pointed out, some of the projects physically may be in one particular area, but the benefits are much larger. Some are, doesn't really matter where it is, like a business loan program, for example. It's not where the office, where the loans are, are, are reviewed and awarded and all that. It's the people that are getting the loans, where, you know, what, where those folks are from. So I just wanted to point that out. Thanks, Mr. Pulaski. Uh, Mr. Harding. Yeah, I made a statement. Uh, I'm just going to let piece of our conversation that we had earlier today. There are some people in Turbone Parish, if you put a plank, a brand new plank in their neighborhood and put some paint on it. See, whether it starts off in Cocoa Dree and end up in gray, the people in gray don't see the real benefits of how much you spend in cocoa tree because they don't see the new piece of wood and they don't see the new paint. And it's difficult for any citizen to actually see how money, if they say millions of dollars went out to, to toward cocoa tree and those folks that are sitting out there right now in gray say, well, millions of dollars spent out there in Cocoa Green, we don't see none of it because they still got uh, the, the same complaints. Of they don't have no sewers, just like some other, other areas, and they have a, a Bayou Turbine. They're just still coming at me, with, and, I, and I feel them because that, that's, that's the situation. So sometimes it's, it's even though it may be that way, and as we build, we should build according to, accordingly where progress can be shown across the board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harding. Um, I have a question from the chair to make sure there's clarity. Uh, Mr. Bajron, um, in your, um, your explanation, you said that um, everything was combined in a sense. Um, so there's some projects which projects have been already submitted for this second run after, I know we have a deadline of November. So what projects have been submitted? If I can 
that's kind of where I want to know where we're at so we'll kind of know what's what's left that we have to submit for approval. So the allocations were combined? And through that process, we were trying to figure out if we should combine, which I, I think we might have done one or two. But no applications have been submitted yet. We're about to start submitting some applications. And so okay, we're, we're you know, as we go through this, we might submit an application where we don't want to combine something and then they want us to combine something and where we – Vice versa, right? So some of this is going to be as we submit these applications, as we get this information from CSRS and get them turned in, uh, that we get feedback on whether or not we can proceed like it is or have to make changes. Okay. So. Um, Mr. Trostclair? Yes, thank you. Um, I'm, this is more of a statement than anything. Maybe I uh, have a question to you. Um, you just stated that, you know, no uh, applications have been submitted. But if I'm correct, uh, and I think I am, but we cannot submit any new applications from here on out. Only applications that we already have approved, first phase, second phase, or alternatives can be turned in at this point, right? So, I'm sorry. So, again, going through, we submitted two sets of plans that were allocation one, allocation two. They combine those plans into one, pro one, one project submission application process now, of which we're going to resubmit the applications of the plans that were approved prior to right but we can't submit anything else for approval from this point on right unless they tell us we can like if, right if, but at this knows. point we, right. we don't have opportunity to turn anything else right. in if we've already if what we've already turned in is the only thing we can work with from their point right. just unless they change it right and, and and that running the risk of if anything different than that delays the process of get, us getting funding Correct. yeah we're trying to fit within the ocd parameters and, and again like you said they've already modified what the allocation allocation not allocation not everything's one I wouldn't be surprised if they don't make some more changes coming out. And, oh, there's maybe an opportunity we get more funding. I mean, there's, there's a few things that are open that we were hearing some different things. But right. uh, once we get that, like, I'm, I'm going to feel better once we get that first application submitted and then that second and then that third. And, and we're working on a plan right now trying to figure out, you know, I want to make sure we get everything in in the time frame. And we don't, we submit enough information to get what we need, but not so much that it takes longer than to submit it. You know what I'm saying? So, and it could change tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Mr. Trostclair and Mr. Bajron. Mr. Kevin Jump. You're good? Okay. Um, and just so I'll understand, and for maybe the viewing public and other folks that might need to understand, um, kind of asking, so I'm clear with Mr. Um, Trostclair alluded to a second ago, everything we submitted so far, even though they told they gave us an extension, that's it. No changes, no nothing, no, no other pro If I want to get a project on uh, Park Avenue, if it wasn't submitted, nothing's going to happen there. It's not going to happen, correct? Unless so, they come to us tomorrow or a week from now or a month from now and say, hey, we're going to do this now. Or, yeah, you know, as of right now, that's where we are, yes. Thank you. All right, Mr. You good? Okay. Item number three. A motion to rescind the condemnation order adopted on February 6, 2024 for the residential and accessory structures located at 1225 Lee Avenue, Homa, owned by Marianne Domang. Moved by Mr. Carl Harding, second by Ms. Kim Chauvin, seeing no lights, members, vote your machines. Vote eight to zero. Motion passes. Item number four. Resolution authorizing Council Chair John Amundi to execute the engagement agreement with Bourgeois Bennett LLC CPAs for the year ending December 31st, 2024, 2025, and 2026. Move Ms. Kim Second. Chauvin. Second, Mr. Kevin Champon. Seeing the lights, members vote your machines. The votes eight to zero, motion passes. Concurring with Parish Administration to approve the award of bid number 24HVAC-05, second rebid purchase of and installation of HVAC repairs for the Utilities Department Animal Shelter Division to Goatee Construction Incorporated. Move Ms. Kim Chauvin. Second, Mr. Carl Harding. Seeing the lights, members vote your machines. Votes eight to eight to zero. Motion passes. Item number six, concurring with parish administration to award bid 24-ELCDIS-20 20, 
Purchase of new unused fault indicator to West Coast distribution. Move Mr. Danny Babin, second Ms. Kim Chauvin. Seeing no lights, members vote your machines. Votes eight to zero, motion passes. Item number seven, concurring with Paris administration to award RFP 24-FIRE-10 purchase of one or more new unused class A pumper fire apparatus to Sunbelt Fire Incorporated. Move Mr. Danny Babin, second Ms. Kim Chauvin, Mr. Steve Trosclair. Yeah, just a quick question. It says one or more. Are we looking at buying more than one off of this one, or are, are we looking how, how, what, it's just kind of a... Ms. Candace? So, no, sir, we had put one or more um, when we went out for bid, hoping if we got two, the prices would be low enough that we'd be able to fund two. This is for just one. I mean, I'm okay with two. I just was what it says. We, uh, we more, would love you know? to. Or more is kind of, <laughs> or more is kind of open ended. You know? Yeah. So the way <laughs> that one or two, I wouldn't have questioned. The way that the bid request went out was to try to get for more than one, but we only have funding for one. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Trusco. Thanks, Ms. Candace. Members, vote your machines. Votes eight to zero. Motion passes. Item number eight, concurring with the Paris administration, declaring monitors, telephones, and and other miscellaneous items with value of less than $5,000 as surplus and to dispose of said items by any legal approved methods. Move Ms. Kim Chauvin. Second, Mr. Danny Babin. Seeing no lights, members vote your machines. Votes eight to zero, motion passes. Item number number nine, concurring with Paris administration to award the state contract purchase of replacing and installing new telescopic seating through Louisiana State Contract number 44000211168 to Insight Incorporated. Move, Mr. Danny Babin. Second. Second, Mr. Kevin Champagne. Got a question on that one. Um, on that, on the seating, on the, in the backup, we have um, the total price, and it has one million nine hundred eighteen thousand eight hundred fifty-one dollars and seventy-two cents. Right under that, there's a forty percent. Is that a discount, or what is what, what exactly is that? And then if we flip to the next page, it says to exceed one million one hundred fifty-one thousand three hundred and eleven dollars and three cents, and a twenty-two percent under that one. So it is the way that I think it is printed out for you. The forty percent is the discount based on um, what the state contract was. Our total cost will be the eight hundred and ninety-eight thousand dollars to replace those bleachers. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Seeing no further lights, uh, members vote your machines. Votes six, six yeas, one nay, and three are absent. Motion passes. Item number 10, concurring with the Paris administration to re reject all bids for bid 24-SWASTE-13 rebid purchase of two new unused terminal tractors and rebid at a later date to reflect the addition of the dealer's licensing requirement. Move Ms. Kim Chauvin. Second. Second, Mr. Kevin Champon. Seeing the lights, members vote your machines. The vote is seven to zero, motion passes. Item number 11, consider the introduction of an ordinance declaring the following adjudicated property as surplus located at 1601 Bayou Du Lodge Road in which the parish has 4.1667% in authorizing said item to be disposed of by any legally approved methods in calling a public hearing on Wednesday, August 28, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. Move Mr. Danny Babin. Second, Ms. Kim Chauvin. Seeing no lights, members vote your machines. 
The vote is seven to zero, motion passes. Item number 12, consider the introduction of an ordinance to approve an additional ad valorem tax exemption of up to $2,500 of the assessed value of property receiving homestead exemption that is owned and occupied by a qualified first responder pursuant to Article 7, Section 21-0 of the Louisiana Constitution and call a public hearing on said matter on Wednesday, August 28th, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. Move Mr. Danny Babin. Second, Second Mr. Clayton Wazan. Seeing no lights, members vote your machines. Vote seven to zero, motion passes. Item number 13, consider the introduction of an ordinance to authorize the parish president to execute an agreement between Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government and the Terrebonne Parish Assessor, Assessors to purchase a vehicle and to provide for related matters and call a public hearing on Wednesday, August 28, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. Move Mr. Danny Babin. Second, Mr. Clayton Wazan. And I have a question on that one as well. And my question is for in it says that uh, in section two in the backup, of course, um, the behind the executive summary page, um, the ordinance proposed section two, it says that last sentence um, or actually if we go up, the parties reached and set the fair market value of the vehicle at thirteen thousand six hundred and thirteen dollars. Um, then if you go down to section two, the last sentence in that line, in that, uh, in that paragraph, it says, um, and that the parish president be and is hereby authorized to execute the acts of other documents necessary to effectuate the donation. We're buying it or being donated to us. Miss, all righty. Parish attorney. Donation is a typo, sir. It should be buying. Thank you very much. And I guess we'll just have that change once we do the taking ordinance. Okay, good deal. Thanks. Um, no further lights, members, vote your machines. Votes eight to zero, motion passes. Item number 14, consider the introduction of an ordinance to adopt the millage rates for tax year 2024 for the parish for the parish property tax subject to roll forward provisions and call for a public hearing on said matter on August 28, 2024 at 6 p.m. Item number one, city ad valerum adjusted millage. Number, item number two, city of Homa fire adjusted millage. Item number three, city of Homa police adjusted millage. Item number four, city ad valerum adjusted and roll forward. Item number five, City of Homa Fire adjusted and rolled forward. Item number six, City of Homa Police adjusted and rolled forward. Item number seven, Parish Tax Alimony Outside Adjusted Millage. Item number eight, Parish Tax Alimony Inside Adjusted Millage. Item number nine, Parish Tax Alimony Outside Adjusted and Roll Forward. Item number 10, Parish Tax Alimony Inside Adjusted and Roll Forward. Item number 11, Drainage Adjusted Millage. Item number 12, drainage adjusted and roll forward. Item number 13, waste collection and disposal adjusted millage. Item number 14, waste, waste collection and disposal adjusted and roll forward. Item number 15, recreation adjusted millage. Item number 16, recreation adjusted and roll forward. Item number 17, juvenile detention adjusted millage. Item number 18, juvenile detention adjusted and roll forward. Item number 19, ter Terrebonne Arc adjusted. Item number 20, Terrebonne Arc adjusted and rolled forward. Item number 21, Health Unit and School Safety adjusted millage. Item number 22, Health Unit and School Safety adjusted and rolled forward. Item number 23, Council on Aging adjusted millage. Item number 24, Council on Aging adjusted and rolled forward. Item number 25, Mental Health Center adjusted millage. Item number 26, Mental Health Center adjusted and rolled forward. 
Item number 27, road district number six, adjusted millage. Item number 28, road district number six, adjusted and rolled forward. Move Mr. Danny Babin, second Mr. Carl Harding. Seeing the lights, members vote your machines. Votes five, five yeas, three nays, two absent. Motion passes. Item number 16, introduce an ordinance to amend the 2024 adopted operating budget and budgeted positions of the Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government for the following items and to provide for related matters. Item number one, home of police department, $11,979. I'm sorry? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Cons item number 15, consider the introduction of an ordinance to adopt the millage rates for tax year 2024 with no roll forward and call for a public hearing on said matter on August 28, 2024 at 6 p.m. Drainage bonds, 0 0.75 mills. Road and bridge bonds, 0 0.75 mills. Sewer tax bonds, 0 0.75 mills. Road lighting district number one, 5.50 mills. Road lighting district number two, 0 0.50 mills. Road lighting district number three, 2.25 mills. Road lighting district number four, 2.25 mills. Road lighting district number five, 2.00 mills. Road lighting district number six, 4.25 mills. Road lighting district number seven, 6.00 mills. Road lighting district number eight, 2.50 mills. Road lighting district number nine, 4.25 mills. Road lighting district number 10, 4.50 mills. Move Mr. Danny Babin, second Mr. Carl Harding. Seeing the lights, members vote your machines. Eight yeas, zero nays, motion passes. Item number 16. Introduce an ordinance to amend the 2024 adopted operating budget and budgeted positions of the Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government for the following items and to provide for related matters. Item number one, Homa Police Department, $11,979. Item number two, Housing and Human Services Head Start HVAC System, $60,000. Item number three, Housing and Urban Development, $800,000. Item number four, Louisiana Highway Safety Commission Grant Award, $101,250. Item, item number five, Housing and Human Services, $500,000. Item number six, Home of Fire Department, $25,996. Item number 6A, add one full-time hazmat responder, grade F3, and call it public, public hearing on August 28, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. Move Mr. Carl Harding. Second. Second, Mr. Kevin Champagne. Seeing the lights, members vote your machines. The vote's eight to zero. Motion to adjourn by Ms. Kim Chauvin, second by Mr. Kevin Champagne. Members vote your machines. Votes eight to zero. Good evening. Supposed to the gavel every single time. Okay. Started. okay. Notice to the public if you wish to address the council, please complete the public wishing to address the council form located on either end of the counter and give it to either the chairman or the council clerk prior to the beginning of the meeting. All comments must be addressed to the council as a whole. Addressing individual council members or staff is not allowed. Speakers should be courteous in their choice of words and actions, and comments shall be limited to the issue 
and cannot involve individuals or staff related matters. Thank you. All cell phones and electronic devices used for communication should be silenced for the duration of the meeting. I'd like to call this meeting to order of the Community Development and Planning Committee. We will stand for, the, um, for prayer. Heavenly Father, we gather tonight as a parish council seeking your guidance and wisdom. Bless our discussions and may our decisions reflect your will. Help us to serve our community with love, mercy, and humility, always mindful of your grace. We ask for your peace to fill our hearts as we work together for the good of our parish. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I Miss Charlie, can you please call roll? Mr. Hamner, Mr. Babin, Ms. Chauvin, Mr. Trustclair, Mr. Pledger, Mr. Harding, Mr. Voisin, Mr. Amity, Mr. Champagne. Here. Madam Chairwoman, you have a quorum present. Thank you. Number one, a motion to rescind the condemnation order adopted on October 24, 2023 on the commercial structure located at 7217 Park Avenue owned by Rochelle Boudreaux-Cochran and Bridget Boudreaux-Bourgeois. Mm -hmm. Moved by Mr. Harding, seconded by Mr. Pledger. Uh, Mr. Harding? Yeah, I have um, Mr. Ray here. And I had a very, very in-depth in conversation uh, with Mr. Ray. Um, we were under the impression that we, it was in Mr. Champagne's um, district. So me and Mr. Champagne had, had met out there. Uh, and, and we had kind of, within the last week or so, try to rectify the problem that we have um, here uh, at this particular location. And I just wanted my colleagues to know that, you know what I mean, I'm, I'm for uh, the progress that we're going with. But unfortunately, it has some circumstances where the communication um, had to be understood about this piece of property. Uh, Mr. Ray has actually uh, come to a particular understanding uh, in reference to um, the permits, uh, amount of time, uh, what is uh, the intent of Turbo and Parish, um, what they want to do. Uh, with that particular piece of property. I asked him to show up uh, in good faith uh, if there was any other questions because uh, we didn't have a, uh, given him an opportunity. I didn't have an opportunity to work with him. It's not like Kevin didn't work with him. Uh, Miss, uh, Mr. Champagne didn't work with him. Then there were some circumstances that we had to clear up. And at this particular time, we're going to rescind this. And um, I just wanted him to show up. And uh, actually, he's showing good faith by showing up, and I'm, I'm satisfied with that, and we can actually try to take care of this uh, problem. There are some tight agreements that we've actually made uh, with Mr. Ray, um, so we don't have to reveal it, but we have made some tight uh, agreements, and he said he's going to stick to them. So um, we want to move forward, but he's, he's made that agreement, and he's shown, shown by uh, his intent by showing up. Thank you for coming out, Mr. Ray. You have one anything you want to say? Uh, no, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, seeing no more lights. Mem sorry, members vote your machines. Eight yeas, two absent. It passes. Number two, resolution authorizing the parish president to execute and submit the program year 2024 Head Start Cost of Living Adjustment Application to the Administration for Children and Families. Moved by Mr. Trosclair, seconded by Mr. Harding. Seeing no lights, members vote your machines. Eight yeas, two absent, passes. Number three, resolution adopting the Main Street Corridor Master Plan as presented to the Council on March 25th, 2024. Okay. Moved by Mr. Harding. Seconded by Mr. Wazian. Seeing no, oh, Mr. Pledger. Thanks, Madam Chair. Question on that. Um, 
Is this the Main Street Corridor Master Plan, the one that we got back in the March, what have you? Is that a, getting that approved so we can pretty much put that as a packet to be able to move forward with our um, our applications for the CDBG? Oh, thank you. Yeah. Some of the projects that are in the DR, the CDBG DR, were taken from the Main Street Corridor Master Plan, but that master plan covers a lot of ground that the CDBG DR doesn't doesn't cover. So yes, is part part of the answer, but it's not everything in that plan. Okay. Okay. Seeing no further lights. Members vote your machines. Seven yeas, one nay, two absent. Resolution passes. Okay, sorry. Thank you. I'm just reading what it's on here, so I apologize. Okay. Number four. Authorizing the parish president to enter into the appropriate subgrantee agreement with the governor's office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness in order to receive $406,822.50 of FEMA hazard mitigation assistance funding to elevate two repetitive loss structures awarded under the 2022 flood mitigation assistance terrible climate resilient elevations. Moved by Mr. Was in second by Mr. Babin. Seeing no lights, members vote your machines. Eight yeas, one absent. Motion pa uh, motion passes. Uh, number five, giving intent, giving notice of intent to adopt an ordinance to amend the zoning map of the parish of Terrebonne, so as to rezone from R one single family residential to R three multi-family residential lots 21 and 22 square four barrel town subdivision 2606 20 and 2608 larry street home of terrebonne parish louisiana kirby bonvalent applicant and calling a public hearing on said matter for wednesday september 25th 2024 at 6 30 p.m Ooh. moved by mr pledger seconded by mr harding Seeing no lights, members vote your machines. Eight yeas, one absent. Motion passes. Number six, giving notice of intent to adopt an ordinance to amend the zoning map of Parish of Terrebonne so as to rezone from R1 single family residential to R2 two family residential lots one through 27, block one, lots one through nine, block two. Lots 1 through 39, Block 3. Lots 1 through 19, Block 4. Porkwood Place Subdivision, Home of Terrebonne Parish, Louisiana. Jim Builders, LLC applicant and calling a public hearing on said matter for Wednesday, September 25th, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. Move. Moved by Mr. Pledger. Second by Mr. Wazan. Seeing no lights, members vote your machines. Eight days, one absent, which passes. Number seven, authorizing the parish president, Jason W. Bajron, to sign and submit a continuum of care program grant agreement between Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government and the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Moved by Mr. Wazan. It wasn't Mr. Wazan. Moved by Mr. Wazan, seconded by Mr. Harding. Seeing no lights, members vote your machines. Eight yeas, one absent, motion passes. Number eight, consider the introduction of an ordinance to amend Article 4, Chapter 18 of the Terrebonne Parish Code, Section 18 through 91, to add Bayside Drive to the 25 miles per hour regulation and call a public hearing on said matter on Wednesday, August 28, 2024, at 6.30 p.m. Moved by Mr. Trosclair, second by Mr. Wazan. Seeing no lights, members vote your machine. Eight, eight yeas, one absent. Motion passes. Motion to. Oh, Mr. Wazan, motion to adjourn. Second by Mr. Harding. Uh, seeing no lights, members vote your machines. And we move on. And we move on.
Notice to the public, if you wish to address the council, please complete the public wishing to address the council form located on either end of the counter, counter and give it to either the chairman or the council clerk prior to the beginning of the meeting. All comments must be addressed to the council as a whole. Addressing individual council members or staff is not allowed. Speakers should be courteous in their choice of words and actions and comments shall be limited to the issues and that cannot involve individuals or staff related matters. Thank you. All cell phones uh, and electronic devices used for communication should be silenced for the duration of the meeting. I'd like to call the meeting to order, have an invocation by the Reverend John Amade and a pledge. Dear Lord, I pray that you guide us so that this meeting can be productive, that it satisfy the, the needs that need to be met, Lord, and that we would be fruitful for all things in your name. Lord, strengthen us as we make tough decisions and let us be effective and decisive. And we pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Amade. Uh, Ms. Charlie, can we have a roll call? Mr. Hamner, Mr. Babin, Ms. Chauvin, Mr. Trustclair, Mr. Pledger, Mr. Harding, Mr. Here. Voisin, Mr. Amity, Mr. Champagne. Here. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum present. Thank you, Ms. Charlie. As stated before, uh, Mr. Hamner is, is not here tonight, but he has reviewed everything and uh, will be here Wednesday night for the meeting. I'd also like to recognize Mr. Alex Ostam in the audience a long time Planning and Zoning Commission on, in Terrebonne Parish. Thank you for your service, Mr. Ostam. Even though we didn't agree all the time. <laughs> Item one, resolution providing for the acceptance of work performed by Foray Contracting Group LLC in accordance with the Certificate of Substantial Completion for Parish Project Number 21-PARK-66 by a country sports park, Boys Concession, Terrebonne Parish, Louisiana. Moved by Mr. Amade, second by Mr. Voisin, seeing no lights, vote your machines. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, seven yeas, motion passes. I, uh, item number two, resolution providing approval of amendment number one to the engineering agreement of parish Project number 23-PARK-46 by a country sports park, limestone parking lot, Terrebonne Pass, Louisiana. Moved by Mr. Amade. Second by Mr. Voisin. Seeing no lights, vote your machines. Eight yeas and no nays. Motion passes. Uh, item number three, resolution providing approval of amendment number one to the engineering agreement for parish project number 16-DRA-67, Lower Little Kaya Drainage Pump Station, replacement D-04, Terrebonne Parish, Louisiana. Moved by Ms. Chauvin, second by Mr. Voisin. Uh, members, see no lights, vote your machines. Eight yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Item number four, resolution awarding the request for bids RFB uh, received for parish project number 23-SEW-23 Elysian Field Sewer Force Main Project to Norris and uh, Repair, excuse me, to Norris and Boudreaux Contractors LLC and authorizing the parish president and or his designee to execute, execute the contract and provide for relative matters. Related matters. <laughs> Moved by Ms. Chauvin, second by Mr. Amade. I uh, will say something before. It has District 7 on here. Bef prior to redistricting, this was in District 7. Now it's in Mr. Pledge's district, but actually it drains all of Ms. Chauvin's district. So in, in any event, uh, seeing no lights, vote your machines. Item passes, eight yeas, no nays. Item number five, resolution authorizing the parish president or parish administration to execute 
a subset. Ooh, here we go. Subrecipient agreement for funding through the American Rescue Plan, Coronas uh, Virus State and Local Fisher of Fiscal Recovery Funds in the amount of $110,000 between South Central Planning and Development Commission and Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government. The purpose is to augment the Nuisance Abatement Division of Planning and Zoning Department to process additional derelict structures and condemnation proceedings. Moved by Mr. Ambedee, second by Mr. Harding. Seeing no lights, members vote your machines. Is everybody voting? With nothing showing up, uh, Tammy. All right, eight yeas, no nays. Motion passes. Oh, excuse me, there is a second point on the back. I apologize. This will cover approximately 25 properties and will include all procedural and demolition services. So let's let's re-vote on this since I didn't read it all. Seeing no lights, uh, vote your mission. Uh, Tammy, should we re-, uh, re Rescind the first one? No. Okay. Let's, we'll vote on the full uh, reading of it. Uh, members, vote your machines. Eight yeas, zero nays. Thank you, Tammy. Uh, item number six, consider the introduction of an ordinance to authorize the parish president to enter into an agreement, uh, amendment uh, number two to the intergovernmental agreement with and lease with recreation district number 11 to remove Odemore Street Park, City Park, Air Base Park, including the gym, excluding the gym, pool, and football fields, Jim Bowie Park, Mala Street Park, Parish Park, Lee Avenue Park, Maple Street Park, Rio Vista Park, and the adult softball complex from the agreement and return care, custody, and control of these parks and terrible parish consolidated government and call a public hearing on Wednesday, August 28, 2024 at 6 30 PM. Moved by Mr. Amade. Second by Ms. Chauvin. Mr. Pledger. I have a question on this. Seems like Mr. Lee Red authored this uh, executive summary. Um, on that, um, is there a reason why we want to, you know, get all that liability back to the parish? Mr. Lee Red? So we, we've been having discussions with the leadership with REC 11 uh, since January about issues related to storm damage and risk management issues on a lot of these parks. REC 11 has had 22 parks, which is a lot for any REC district. Uh, we took Shady Oaks back under the parish care uh, because we as a parish cut and pick up trash on this park. We also do that for every park on this list besides the adult softball complex. Uh, so the idea is that uh, there's a, a lot of risk management issues at these parks that are in your backup. Uh, we feel that this would be a hand up to Rec 11 since we already cut the grass and take care of the trash to assume control of these, of these parks and uh, take care of them. Uh, we have the resources to do so. Uh, Rec 11 is loaded down. And I think this is a good way to work together. Uh, with this district and uh, move these properties forward in a quicker manner for our, our citizens. Uh, you know, our public works department can handle a lot of these risk management issues. If we, you want to talk about liability, uh, if if something happens on these parks to somebody, we get sued as a parish, right? Even though Rec 11 does maintain it, we're still liable. Uh, the longer they remain outstanding, you know, the worse that is. So that's the reason why uh, Adult Softball Complex also has some, some issues related to storm damage that needs to be fixed. Uh, this particular park uh, is not maintained by us, like I said earlier, but uh, it fits into our mission for quality of life. And again, with discussions from leadership at REC 11, they seem agreeable to uh, turn this back over to the parish and focus on other uh, parks. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that, uh, Mr. Lee, but I have to disagree with you because I guess they're telling me something totally different. They said that the, after I saw this last week on my agenda, I reached out to them as well, as you have conversations with them, and I've had them too with them too as well. And they informed me that they were in agreement with all the parks with the exception of the airbase, 
which is uh, Peter Cavella, they call it, and also with the softball complex. So maybe there's a, I missed something in there, or maybe there's miscommunication on what they actually want. But what we, I think what we need to do is kind of go back around the horn with that. I'm all in agreement with, you know, all these eliminating some of those burdens with the rec district, with all those parks. However, if they're not in agreement with a couple of them or whichever ones they were talking about in particular, if they're not in agreement with that, I mean, I'm, I'm just kind of at a loss. I don't know what to, you know, what to think there. Mr. Lee, right? I agree with you. I'm, I'm at a loss too. I, I thought we had a, a good understanding of the purpose of this. This is supposed to be a, uh, a thing that helps everybody, right? So I, if that's not the case, if they don't feel that way, I'm more than happy to continue to talk about this. Yeah, well, I mean, what we could do is, I mean, it'll satisfy both of us to make sure that I'm on the right page uh, since that does, you know, uh, Rec 11 is within my district. And also we have uh, other council council folks here that um, Rec 11 represents. Um, I think it would be good of us to just kind of sit down with them to make sure that we understand. I don't want them telling me one thing and and you're understanding something else because I mean of course we want to work collectively and help mm -hmm. help them out and literally it's it's really helping them out you know as a whole but I just want to make sure we're clear before we we jump forward on that if we can absolutely and you know, I served on Rec 11 I understand their needs and, and their shortfalls and I understand you know we, we all are very familiar with all the all the issues that plague Rec 11 in the past currently it's it's a lot of properties right and uh, like I said this is meant to be a hand up and a partnership. So if Absolutely. we need to get on the same page, we can. Absolutely. Thanks. All right, Michelle Van. Okay, so my question would be this. Uh, Noah, in some of these things, when they came here, they said that they had paid some of the bills. There's one that isn't still paid and one that is. Who's going to be on the hook for that? Like, who's going to be, like, if we take this over, are we paying? these invoices or are they still paying those invoices for the fixes that were done? Does that mean they, they would be responsible okay. for those invoices? I just want to make now. sure. No, no. I just want to make sure. Okay. Just to interject, that may not be, those invoices may not be directly related to any of these particular parks. They were. They were? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just, just asking. Yeah, yeah, no, basically I wouldn't, asking. I wouldn't have yeah. asked the question if they weren't. Okay, let me see. Mr. Harding is next. Yes, I think uh, Rec 11 meets tomorrow. Uh, this this could be actually rectified tomorrow also. As it's a public calling for a public hearing. That's an opportunity uh, to uh, have some dialogue there. The question would be uh, basically to Candace. Um, I think earlier the, uh, some of these parks that were on here were underfunded. We increased the funding. So, you know, and the situation uh, so far is going forward. Uh, where will we actually find the funds to actually uh, take upon uh, the extra task? Uh, even though we're given uh, an opportunity to rock 11, uh, how will we pay for it on the backside? Jason, he asked a question directly to her. I'm going to go to her next, if that's all right. Thank you. So, Mr. Harding, it would still fall within what we refer to as our non district recreation or non recreation fund. Um, and most of that is funded through general fund, but it's going to, we're paying for the grass cutting and stuff anyway. So we, and with the increase that you had put in last year for 2024's budget, we should still be able to cover that the same way we have. What, with the same amount of money? Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, now, um, Mr. Mr. Lee um, in my association with Rock 11, each hurricane they have somehow or another, it's three or four, five hundred thousand dollars worth of telephone poles. You know what I mean? So now, um, Turbo Power consolidated the government did not assume the responsibility in reference to the insurance to that. So you know what I mean? Uh, going forward, also, uh, just like the, the gyms, the gyms, uh, Turbo Power consolidated the government. They actually insure the gyms. So that would be, from my experience with that, uh, these fields that actually, it's rather costly. Uh, when these poles are down, that's why the, the conditions uh, at the facilities that they're gonna have right now. So especially with the uh, adult softball complex, you know man, I think they have a, they had about a $500,000 tip right now, uh, and they only be able to recover about 90% of that. 
and it's going to take a long time for them to get the money. So going forward as a parish, uh, it might be consideration use the parish insurance to actually ensure that so you can actually have the recovery for it. Finish, Mr. Harding. Uh, Mr. Vajroin. I'm going to let Candace address okay, this. Okay, Candace, I'm sorry. So, Mr. Harding, REC 11 is included in Terrible and Parish's property insurance. So, all of those properties that we're talking about are part of our policy. Um, they did have to wait through the whole settlement of the insurance po policy, unfortunately, because they're part of the bigger picture with all of parish property. And we are currently working with FEMA to approve the allocation of our insurance settlement, as well as any obtain and maintain that they may have from previous storms. But they are included, and it has been part of their reimbursement request from FEMA. Well, that's, that's good to hear. Because hey, hold on, Cole. Put your, your hit your light again. That's good to hear, because now what I'm hearing, probably different from what I've been hearing, what I'm hearing now is the fact that it's not going to take three or four years to get the recovery of that $500,000 that they spend, and they can put that back off into their recreation facilities. You know what I mean? They, they get them up and running again. So that's that's positive news right there. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Bajron? Yeah, so a few things. One, uh, I'm a resident of Rec 11, uh, and I've also, like many of you may know, coached in the system uh, through all these different parks. And so uh, through being involved with recreation and trying to make sure that all our recreation districts are set up for success, um, you know, we've known that Rec 11's had more parks than they should be dealing with. So, uh, I appreciate Noah's effort to make sure that we get Rec 11, give Rec 11 everything they should have and deal with and can keep, can keep up with. Uh, but when you look at some of these issues that have been existing since 2016 and 2017 and 2018 and not resolved, you know, we have to do something. Uh, when I look at the conversation around the sports complex, the softball complex, uh, I, I can't count the amount of times that I've heard that the Bayou Crunch Sportsplex gets all the money and all the attention and everything else. And so when I look at the amount of time that we've had a master plan for the air base side of things and outside of and having that plan did the uh, splash pad. I think it's the only thing that really has been able to do that. So I do feel like we're in a position similar to what we went through with Rec 2-3 and the Bayou Crunch Sportsplex to really provide our residents what an opportunity for the air base park, park to be what it should be equivalent to what we're dealing with by country sportsplex. And I don't think that, you know, nothing negative to rec 11, but we've had a lot of time past that we've got very little done. And, and a lot of it's the same situation we dealt with rec two, three, not having the funding and different issues that they dealt with. So why I feel like we owe our residents at this point that we need to treat the air base sports park on the East side, which is where I'm from. You know, lived on the east side, born in Berg. I mean, uh, lived in Berg most of my life to give those residents that same attention that they deserve. And so as we have a conversation at Rec 11, um, my thing to them would be, how do you tell the residents of the east side that they shouldn't get the same thing that the residents of the west side got with my country sports plex? So I just think we really need to consider that when we have these conversations so that the parish can take that park to where it is just like by country sports plex on the east, on the west side. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bajro. And Mr. Pleasure, before uh, in line, would you talked about the, the Bayou Country Sports Park in Rec 2 3? Their millage stayed the same. They, they received the same millage, just like Rec 11 is going to receive the same millage, even though we take these parks over. As you just said, we, we owe that to the citizens. If we did it on one park, we should do it for the other. That way, everybody's getting the full benefit. But I just wanted to make it clear that Rec 11 will not be losing any millage money that they have coming in, just like Rec 2, 3 did not lose any millage money when we took over the Bike Country Sports Park. Thank you. Mr. Pledger? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and I'm in, I'm in total agreement with that, uh, you know, helping them out, a hand up, if, if that's how we want to categorize it, because that's a, that's a lot of liability that we're looking to do. However, um, I just want to make sure that they understand what's happening and we understand and we're in agreement with what we have going on. So with that, I'm, I would, I'd like to make a motion that we hold this over until we can get some, have some talks with them to try and figure it out and make sure that everybody's on the same page and there's no, you know, no uh, misunderstandings on either of our parts. 
Motion on the floor. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to hold. Do you specify any time? Would it be the August 28th? August 28th meeting, yes. Okay, hold it over until the August 28th meeting uh, so more discussions can take place. Do I have a second? Uh, Mr. Trosclay has a second. Uh, seeing no lights, members vote your machines. Uh, we have uh, seven yeas and uh, one nay. Motion passes. It will be held over for two weeks. All right. Uh, item number seven, consider the introduction of an ordinance amending ordinance number 9030 in the Terrible Pass Code of Ordinance, which was established a no parking zone on Polk Street to extend the existing zone northward to 532 Polk Street, authorizing the installation of said signs and addressing other matters relative thereto and calling a public hearing on said matter on Wednesday, August 28, 2024, at 6.30 p.m. Moved by Mr. Harding, second by Ms. Chauvin. Seeing no lights of members voting machines. Tammy. Carly. Carly. Eight yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Motion adjourned by Mr. Harding, yes. second by Mr. Pledger. Vote your machines. Motion adjourned, eight zero. I had to make the motion that you don't vote. Okay, good. But that, this way you're pinning everybody. Good. 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 No, I, I, I just. <laughs> 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 All right, notice to the public, if you wish to address the council, please complete the public wishing to address the council form located on either end of the counter and give it to either the chairman or the council clerk prior to the beginning of the meeting. All comments must be addressed to the council as a whole. Addressing individual council members or staff is not allowed. Speakers should be courteous in their choice of words and actions and comments shall be limited to the issue and cannot involve individuals or staff related matters. Thank you. All cell phones and electronic devices for used for communication should be silenced for the duration of the meeting. Um, call the meeting to order of the Terrebonne Parish Council po uh, Policy Procedure and Legal Committee. Um, the invocation by Mr. Brian Pledger and the Pledge of Allegiance. Heavenly Father, we ask you this evening to give us wisdom guidance and understanding that we may better, better be able to serve and make decisions for the people of Terrebonne Parish. I ask a special blessing on this nation, on this state, and of course, this great parish. These and many other blessings we ask in your darling son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Ms. Charlie, uh, can you please give us a roll call? Mr. Hamner, Mr. Babin, Ms. Chauvin, Mr. Trustclair, Mr. Pledger, Mr. Harding, Mr. Voisin, Mr. Amity, Mr. Champagne. Here. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum present. All right. Item one, approve the co-sponsorship request from the St. Elwha KC number 8779 for the Bayou Du Large Nights of Columbus Cajun Fair to be held on Friday, October 11th, 2024, from 11.30 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. Saturday, October 12th, 2024, from 10 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. And Sunday, October 13th, 2024, from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. at 1331 Dr. Beatrice Road. Who was that? All right, moved by Mr. Wazan, second by Mr. Babin. 
Uh, members vote your uh, machines. Eight yeas, no nays, two absent, but one absent. Motion carries. All right, item number two. Approve the co-sponsorship request from Walk With Grace organization for the Walk With Grace into Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month to be held on September 28, 2024, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Homa Downtown Courthouse Square. Um, moved by Ms. Um, Kim Chauvin, <laughs> second by Mr. Uh, Harding. No lights. Uh, go ahead and vote your machines. All right. Eight, eight votes yay, no votes nay, one absent. Motion carries. All right. Item number three. Approve the co-sponsorship request from the South Louisiana Wetlands Discovery Center for the Rougarou Fest to be held October 18th through October 20th, 2024 at 86 Val High Boulevard, Homa, Louisiana. Motion by Ms. Kim Chauvin, seconded by Mr. Uh, Harding. Seeing no lights, uh, members vote your... Uh, Motion. All right. Motion carries. Eight, eight to zero. Uh, one, one absent. All right. Item number four. Approve the co-sponsorship requests from the Bayou Region Arts Council for the Bayou Arts Fest to be held on October 12, 2024, from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. in downtown Homa. Motion by Ms. Kim Chauvin. Second by Mr. Steve Torsclair. Mr. Clayton Wazan. Um, seeing no lights, member vote your machines. Uh, vote is eight to zero, one absent. Motion carries. Uh, item number five, consider the introduction of an ordinance to amend Terrible and Parish Ordinance number 8865 to remedy the title of that certain D, dedicated portion of Catherine Street in Homa, Louisiana, and to address other matters relative thereto and call a public hearing on Wednesday, August 28, 2024, at 6.30 p.m. Oh, Moved by Mr. Steve Trusclair, second by Mr. Harding. Um, seeing no lights, uh, members vote your machine. There's a light. Oh, speaker card. That's right. All right, we have Mr. Alex Ostheimer uh, up at, to talk about this Thank issue. You. Yeah, please uh, state your name and address for the Before record. Before you rule me out of auto, Catherine Street was named after my mother, and the Conley family had to pay the paving lien on that street, according to Eddie Pallara, and they did. And there's a problem with all of those streets that weren't just dedicated from Oak Street and from Bacon Street to the canal that would be nice if you could straighten them all out at one time. And, you, and, and I know the deal because, like I said, my mother was, and I got a catch-all phrase in Aunt Ruth's will that I get them. But I understand they're supposed to be divided. But anyway, I'd like, I, I can come back for the public hearing on that. But tonight... Please uh, state your name and address. Okay, I got... That one for you, so you don't say I blindsided you. What's that? Your name and address. Your name and address. Okay, I'm gonna give you that. Just I got. I gotta get rid of these two. One for the My name is Alec Ostheimer. I live at 101 Oak Street, Homa, Louisiana, 70363. The following are my opinions. This is in reference to the Homer Restoration District and the Overlay Zoning District. The people that I gave copy to have the backup data. The proposal seems to want vacant buildings in their area upgraded and maintained in rental-ready condition. The owner would have to spend their money to sell their building <coughs> 
to to upgrade their building or sell their or sell their building at a write-off price to someone else because of the incumbencies. The public deserves to have their say. I do not believe that the public notices on these issues at the Zoning Commission and the Parish Council adequately did this, which might affect the validity of the law. Please consider the following. Mr. Pulaski has a letter on May 16, 2024. Zoning and Landing Commission staff report. HRD boundaries are any property with frontage along Main Street or Park Avenue from Morgan Street to Gankai Road involved, including the portion under the twin spans. That would mean Joe's Coffee House and the Rotary Club are not in it. Because they don't front on Main Street. Now, anyway, uh, we'll come back to that. I just, let me, let me. Hold on one second, sir. Mr. Chairman, I hate to do this to Mr. Osbama, but this is not an agenda item that we're on. And this is really out of order. Uh, you should have done this under the other one, or you can come back Wednesday night at our meeting at public hearing and talk about this. But I want this is not an agenda item, so we're in violation act. No, but I, I all I want to do is get this in your hands. So if y'all want to answer Wednesday night, I can come back and talk again. But I want this issue addressed, not for me, not for you, but for the people at Tabon. Right. So, so Wednesday night is the night. And I, well, but I want you all to have your chance to look at it and say, oh, Tommy, you don't know what you're talking about. Now, Danny could say that with a straight face, but anyway. Oh. Anyway, the second number two, February eighth, there was a no. No, we're gonna you come come Wednesday night. May I finish this? No, it's because it's not agenda item. It's not the subject that we're here to talk to. It's what item number five is, which you were talking about er, earlier, Catherine Street. Oh, I thought you said I was going to public speak. I had both items on the card, sir. I had the uh, Catherine Street. And, and this issue on the legality of, of this ordinance. All I'm wanting you to do is get it in your mind and do whatever you want to it. So when I come Wednesday, no one gets surprised. We got it. Okay. So you want me to go sit down? Okay. We, we have to, we, we, can't, we can't address it tonight. Okay. Do my remarks on Catherine Street go in the record? Yes. All right, uh, no lights, uh, member voucher. Uh, motion moves. Motion eight, eight zero. All right, uh, we have a motion to adjourn by Mr. Babin and a second by Mr. Kim Chauvin, uh, members voucher machines. Motion carries.